What's up guys? This is Hannah back with another video. Today I'm going to share with you a secret sauce that, you know, I'm sure a lot of people are not going to be happy that I'm sharing this with you, but here I am and I'm about to share with you guys some of the best hidden gem places on the internet that I find really good deals on. Now, Disclaimer is that you're not always going to find the best deals on this website, but they're definitely, you know, for different reasons because the auctions are in different language or different time zone, or even that these some of these platforms are not as well known. You do find these hidden gems that go for a lot lower than they should or they have been. And so I'm about to share those with you guys. Pay attention. Let's get started with today's video. All right, so you guys know if you're a collector based in the US or Western Europe or Australia, so basically an English speaking uh, country and you know you are used to collecting sports cards, you know of these websites like eBay, Golden, uh, PWCC, um, Alt, Heritage, etc. These are already well established um, sort of platforms that we all know about or if you didn't know these are some of the bigger ones uh, where the primary sort of language of these platforms are english obviously on ebay i think you can you know look at the site in different languages and so on but it, we know those places and so because for example ebay has the biggest demand and also the biggest supply you know the prices that you kind of realize you know as a buyer and a seller on ebay is pretty competitive you're really not going to be able to find steals as a buyer unless there is a error in the title um, or something like that, right? Um, or like some people don't want to buy cards out of China. So, you know, you do sometimes see, not always, but sometimes see when the seller is in China and the buyer is outside of China, those values going for a little bit lower than market value. But anyways, eBay in general, you're gonna get market value because we kind of see it, that platform as market for most of the cards. And then you have the high ends um, that really, um, you know, set competitive markets markets on sites like golden.co, uh, golden auctions and heritage and PWCC premier and alt uh, liquid auctions as well. So some of these sort of higher than say 10,000 USD in that range or above, you know, you do see these cards being sold pretty competitively in these platforms. So I'm not here to talk about those. If you don't know them, go check them out as well. They're all great. They each have their advantage um, and disadvantages, but I mainly look at what kind of cards come up on these sites and watch these items closely and then see if you know I'm willing to buy it or not. So enough of that. I wanna share with you four different places that I go on a daily basis, unless I'm sick or I'm out of town or I'm on vacation, four websites that I go daily to check for items that I want to purchase. So the first place that I go on a daily basis is Mercari.jp. We know that there's a Mercari platform in the US as well, but this is different. Folks who live in Japan and sell from Japan, list them on Mercari.jp. So I'll leave the links for these websites on the comment section below. So if you are a TCG collector, especially NTG collector, listen up. And also if you're based in the US, listen up. There's tons of low hanging fruits on this website and most of them are buy it nows, but even that price is below market that I find. And if you are a US based buyer right now, you have the advantage of everyone because the currency exchange for USD to JPY is at all time low or high, depending on how you want to look at this. So the dollar is so much stronger than Japanese yen right now that essentially you're already getting like a 30, 40% discount. And for some of these sellers, they have not adjusted their price for the fluctuating currency rate. And then the cards that you find out of Japan, some of these you will not find elsewhere. So TCG products, especially Japanese TCG products that just got released. If you want to buy them, you know, straight up from Japan versus a middleman who has to get these shipments out of Japan and then list them on eBay or, you know, other fixed price platforms like MySlabs or something like that. If you don't buy it directly from a consumer or a reseller in Japan, Mercari.jp, check it out. 
like hands down i found some good deals especially on tcg ux that are priced well below market on this platform by the way guys i'm not sponsored by any of these companies i mean they're so big and they're doing so well they probably don't need more promotion but just wanted to point out that these are actual places outside of the big ones that i've mentioned earlier in the video that i go on a daily basis to check for pricing on the products or cars that i'm in the chase for so wanted to throw that out there second place that i go for steals uh, on the internet at least online is card hobby some of you might be familiar with them some of you might have seen them start to kind of set up at shows around the us as they are trying to expand globally it's a platform based out of china um, and it's essentially a c2c um, ebay of china uh, sellers post their own photos their own listings and buyers purchase it there's a small buyer's premium fee as well that gets added on to the final pricing uh, but if you haven't checked out the platform i highly recommend that you do even if you're not intending to buy anything because it has some of the most chased after cards on there it has some amazing soccer basketball uh formula one i mean i don't see too much football so outside of football i see really really good inventory being churned on the website there's both um, an auction and a buy it now feature and so check out both of it it's crazy i mean even just to see what kind of cards are there um you know in asia in china and so the reason why i really like card hobby now is before i don't know how long this ago but i don't know i don't remember how long ago this was but before you needed an address in china uh, to be able to purchase um you know items on card hobby so you had to be local however they've since really you know worked things out and so now as a resident of outside of china you can purchase cards you can have them shipped to outside of china and also pay with stripe if you are in a country where stripe is available you can pay with stripe so the transaction flow and the logistics of things have gotten so much smoother um, as an international buyer so i definitely recommend um, you going there i've gotten at least two of my grails from that website um, which i know would have gone for far more had they been listed on say golden or pwcc some of those um, kind of high-end platform so i'm very happy of those purchases and i continue to look at this website i mean even if it's not high-end like cars that go for 40 50 bucks on ebay sell sometimes on this platform for i don't know 15 10 bucks like i've seen those um on the recent rips of tennis and soccer recently and so definitely check it out um and you can have them shipped directly to you or ship to a middle kind of person and then have them aggregate it and then ship it over to you wherever you are so i love card hobby uh, they're doing some amazing things um, they're showing up to more shows around the world which is amazing they were just at the national they'll be i think at the london card show and also at bourbon car show at the end of the month third place that you can go to is tw.yahoo.com so it's basically yahoo uh, marketplace for taiwan if you've been collecting sports cards and tcg specifically pokemon for a while you know what kind of cards live in taiwan uh, it is just absolutely insane how dedicated some of the collectors be you know get and you know the demand for new products um you know in the whole kind of culture is insane it's amazing uh little kids to you know young adults to adults you know all collect uh pokemon ntg um and of course sports cards as well so there are some big uh, sellers on ebay um, that are based in taiwan but they also cross sell not like double you know list but they sell also on the taiwanese yahoo website and there are many sellers who are not on ebay but are on this yahoo marketplace you might have to go through some hoops to have it uh, purchased um, if you are a non-taiwan resident um, and to have it shipped to you somehow you may need a middle person um, kind of managing that for you uh, so it is not as smooth as you would want it to be like on card hobby 
or Mercari Japan. Uh, so that is one downside, but I mean, the amount of crazy inventory that gets listed there, um, you might want to go check that out. So a very, very solid site um, based out of Taiwan that kind of showcases the caliber of cards that are coming out of Taiwan. Last but not least, um, this is an auction platform where I had my biggest win on it last year uh, in 2022 when I found uh, the entire set times like three. So there were like three sets of this in a binder um, of the 1984 Panini Sports Formula One Grand Prix Scratch and Play. I essentially purchased this just one binder of acetate cards on Katowiki. The exact address of the website is katowiki.com. I purchased it, you know, kind of taking faith and, and the pictures weren't great. Uh, you couldn't see beyond, you know, like what the images were. You couldn't tell the condition of the car, certainly. But I took a gamble and purchased the entire set for I think $12,000 USD at the time, including shipping. And there was a whole kind of, you know, headache with UPS holding it at UPS point because they weren't sure what, what it was and so on. But anyways, after about a month of it being at the UPS shipping center, it got um, delivered to me. And lo and behold, uh, it was the entire set of, again, the, the Grand Prix Scratch and Play 1984, which has Senna's rookie card in there. Um, and I graded both of the Senna uh, portrait cards. One graded a 7, PSA 7, which was Pop 1 at the time and then a PSA 6, which was a fantastic grade as well. Um, and then I had about probably like 70 more cards uh, for the set uh, of portrait and cars of other drivers, which is incredible. And I have all of that still with me. I did end up selling the PSA 7 Senna. I wanna say the card eventually sold for something like 45K or so. Obviously I didn't get all of that back because you know Golden does take um, you know, uh, buyer's premium portion. Um, but it was an incredible uh, return, obviously. Um, having spent 12K on the entire set of 70 plus cards, spent about maybe two to 3,000 USD for grading uh, some of these cards, um, and then sold one card for over 40K net to me, which kind of covered more than covered the entire cost and so very very happy with that purchase and all the friends who kind of led me to that but anyways katawiki is a great site it's a dutch auction platform and so you see a lot of different types of um you know items and collectibles being auctioned but they're also um cards specifically because germany you know huge uh, motorsport fan base and just history of cars you know like bmw mercedes porsches all um coming out of germany and also you have michael schumacher who is a legendary formula one uh, racer such big name out there formula one cards listed on katawiki can sometimes go uh, for well below uh, what they would uh, if they were listed on ebay for example and so i definitely recommend that you check it out if you're in the market for formula one cards or other motorsport collectibles so guys that's it um those four websites i go by religiously you know it's like going on window shopping for me going and checking out what kind of items you know become available and it's a sweet feeling you know like you buy something for a discount or for sale because you know you did your work you took that extra time extra step of research and going to different places to look for the card that you have been looking for and to buy it for you know as as low as you can really is the goal at least for me and so um it's an incredible feeling anyways so those four places go check it out again not sponsored by any of them some of them might have you know different shipping options and like payment options as a uh, international buyer if you're not based in these regions but it's nothing that you can't figure out again don't stop just because it looks hard or complicated figure it out and i think that's how you build your own you know strategic tactic that gives you you know an advantage um, to get into some of these markets or cards before others do and so thanks for watching everybody I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. That was awesome.